welcome to Learn from the Experts, sponsored by Women's Business Owner Alliance of Pioneer Valley, better known as WBOA. And my name is Marianne Marzano with Marianne Talks, and this is my co-host, Freda Brown with Divorce Financial Services. Thank you. It's and good to be here. Good to be here. And our um, guest today is Michelle Begley. Michelle, can you tell us a little bit about you? Sure. Um, my name is Michelle Begley, and I work at a law firm called Begley Webster. We're located in West Springfield, Massachusetts. And we're here to talk about divorce. Yep. It's an ugly truth. <laughs> <laughs> For some. I, yes, that's true. That's, that's a really good point. So what exactly do you do? Uh, well, I'm a divorce attorney, and I've been doing that for about 20 years. So uh, I help people through various stages of the process, whether it's the beginning of the process, the middle of the process, um, working with people that have children. Uh, sometimes uh, I do also do some mediations as well. Oh, okay. So there are different types of divorce. What, are, what, are, what is the difference? What should, what, why would someone want to choose a mediation as opposed to a uh, traditional divorce? That's a really good question. Um, so mediation is where, uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it. One is you could just hire a mediator that the couple can hire one person as the mediator who then doesn't represent either, either party. And then the um, couple can go though with attorneys and have attorney assisted mediation as well. Uh, but the majority of the time, it's, it, it's usually mediation without attorneys, and the mediator is there to help the, the couple see if they can come to an agreement or come to an agreement on the majority of the issues, um, but they cannot give legal advice. Then the mediator can also never be called into court to discuss what was, what was it's a confidential process. Um, sometimes, though, people do have a, tr the case does start out very um, contested, and they start, the, the couple might start off with two attorneys, and they may have maybe have reached an agreement uh, to 90% of the issues and they're just sort of stuck on one particular issue and then the attorneys sometimes then would suggest that they try mediation to see if they can just reach an agreement on that one last issue to move it forward um, to a full agreement. So that's probably the majority of cases that I think come to mediation is where um, they're almost there and they just need another a little bit of help from a neutral uh, party that hasn't been involved in the case to give them kind of a fresh look at the case. Okay. So what, if somebody is contemplating divorce, what would be the first thing they should do? Well, uh, they, I think they should certainly to sit down with an attorney just to get the basic information. Um, there's, you know, generally attorneys don't charge a fee for initial consultation. And a lot of times people don't know that and they might start the process. Um, I think there's a lot of misconception about how much it's going to cost. And, and it always depends on what is going, what is, some divorces could be very complicated, could have very complicated financial issues, mm -hmm. but the parties are really geared towards an agreement. And so even though they might have millions of dollars, the agreement um, can come to you fairly quickly and it might not be as expensive as people think. On the other hand, sometimes where it's not a very complicated matter, it's a very emotionally driven process. So sometimes mm. people are fighting to fight. Um, and then those cases can get kind of expensive. So the beginning steps are just to sit down with an attorney to find out some of the really basic information. Um, and so they just need to get some background about the, the type of process. Um, there's two different ways to get a divorce. One is if you, if you think you have a full agreement about everything or you're very close to that um, and you actually do come to an agreement, you can file what's called an uncontested divorce or a joint petition for a divorce where you're filing all the paperwork saying, we agree, here's all our paperwork. And you can get a, a, a divorce date within a couple of months of filing it. Um, that's typical when there might not be children involved, maybe it's a short-term marriage, there's just really not a lot to fight about. Those are typically the cases that are uncontested or they're the cases that went to mediation and they've been working on it behind the scenes for quite some time and then they're ready to file an uncontested divorce. Um, the other way is a contested divorce and where uh, one party decides they want to go ahead and start the process so they file the divorce um, complaint and starts off as a contested divorce. Um, and those just take a lot longer. There's a six month waiting period before you can actually get a divorce under the contested um, avenue and most of those divorces might take nine months to a year to kind of go through the process. It can be a little bit longer, um, but that's the typical, the pattern of the processes, whether it's an uncontested or a contested divorce. 
Wow, there's a lot to it. And, and where does collaborative divorce come into the picture? So collaborative law is, um, it's not mediation, but it is uh, a process where uh, an individual can hire an attorney that's been trained in what's called a collaborative uh, process, which is kind of a, a I don't want to say mediation mindset, but it's a, a mindset where the attorneys have been trained in this process where the parties agree and everyone actually signs a contract indicating they will not litigate the matter, meaning they're not going to go into court and fight about these issues. And what they do is they, um, the two attorneys and the two clients um, hold a series of meetings in one of the, the attorney's offices, and then you kind of switch back and forth so, that, so one person doesn't feel like they have more power than the other. And they're, it's run kind of like a business meeting. There's an agenda set beforehand so everyone knows what the topics are going to be that are going to be discussed, so whether that's child-related issues. And then that is all that's going to be talked about in that, in that session. So even if people want to discuss other things, um, it's really how to what the agenda is going to be about for that particular topic. And then at that meeting, at the conclusion of the meeting, then the agenda for the next topic um, that needs to be discussed will be set and the meeting will be set. So um, it has to be where people are really committed to trying to reach an agreement and they probably have a relatively decent relationship that they feel they can sit down in a room together for two hours at a, at a time. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's definitely not for everybody, but it's a very a good process. It's um, It can be difficult, but you, you it's, it's, it's a much better way of spending your, your, your efforts and your money um, to do it that way, where you're really focused for two hours on your case. If a case is more um, litigious and you're running to court, um, it's a lot less, it's very stressful for the clients to be sitting in a hallway with uh, 50, 60 other people. They're also very stressed out, um, trying to make decisions, going before a judge, letting a judge decide your life versus trying to figure out that on your own, you know, in a private conference room with your attorney. And it, so it's just a lot less stressful environment. Mm -hmm. So what if somebody's thinking about going through a divorce, what, what, what type what would be the things that would make me want to think that maybe I should do mediation or maybe I should do collaborative, maybe I should do litigated? What are the factors that would drive a person to one, or one process or the other that would be more beneficial to them? Um, I, think, I, th I think if there's, sometimes there's a power struggle between spouses and one um, spouse seems to, seems to have more power, if you will, over the other. And, and so if you're the person that maybe doesn't feel like that you have the, the um, power to stand up to or stand equal to your spouse, then mediation might not be the um, approach because you might just give in because that's just how it's been your entire marriage. So that probably wouldn't be a good um, match for that particular person. Um, again, collaborative law, the, they have to be able to communicate enough to sit in, in um, a room together and a, in a series of meetings, and that's not for everybody either. But at least they have a lawyer that's advocating for them Correct. In, that, in that position. Right, right. And sometimes cases just, for whatever reason, just have to be litigated. Um, the majority of the time, though, cases, it's probably a very small percentage of cases that actually go to a trial. I mean, a lot of cases start off as... Um, contested and, and all of that and then people get tired um, they realize it's really not that significant anymore because time passes um, they decide that financially it doesn't make sense to continue and it probably never did from the beginning but they were emotionally so into the case um, so you know maybe five percent of cases um, actually probably really go to a trial before a judge and a lot of those have to do with if there's um, businesses that are owned and there's so there's evaluations of businesses and there might be two business experts that have completely different values of a business um, or sometimes the custody cases custody over children those are um, also cases that unfortunately oftentimes go to a, a trial before a judge mm -hmm. as well so what do you think is the most um, thing that's that people are, are most concerned about in in the divorce are they most concerned about um, their kids or are they most concerned about Am I going to have enough money to live when I die? Before I die, when I retire, am I going to have money to retire? Or are they just concerned? Where am I going to live? What? Um, I unfortunately don't think people worry as much about the future as they probably should because they're now in the moment of this divorce, and that's all they're really focusing on. Um, I think the majority of people are 
really worried about their children um, and trying to figure out how that's all going to look. And, and that's tied into finances, too, from both sides. If one parent, you just it's not going to ever financially be the same when they're trying to run two households. Um, one parent that the one that's paying the child support is very worried about how I make how am I going to make these child support payments and still live on my own. Um, same with the person that has the children that's receiving the child support. It's never the same amount of money that they had as a couple together, and now they have to um, raise the children on that money and pay for all the expenses relating to the children. And some children are really involved in many different activities and sports and designer clothing and 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 all of those things. And um, so. To answer your question, I think it's, it's the children and the finances are often very tied together. Mm. So on child support, how do, how do they determine what the child support is going to be? So in Massachusetts, there's a formula that the court uses, um, and it takes into account, all it takes into account is both parties' income, uh, their health insurance costs, and then if there's any daycare costs for the children. They do not take into account people's bills, their, their car payments, their mortgage payments, their rent, their heat. Uh, none of those things are factored in. It's strictly their income, health insurance, and if there's daycare costs. And is that income their gross income or after they, uh, what they get for a weekly in, their weekly check? Is it their? It's gross income. It's based off their gross mm. for both parties. So what are some misconceptions that you find, you know, maybe a common misconception that people come in thinking one thing and it's something else? So um, there's lots. Um, in Massachusetts, we're primarily what's called a no-fault divorce state. And so what that means is the courts don't really care why your marriage might be ending. So oftentimes people want to come in with these files of, um, you know, maybe their spouse is having an affair and they want to show me, you know, their detective work about the emails or this, that, and the other, and, and the courts really don't care about that. So that's mm -hmm. a really big one that they want to prove that they are the better person and their spouse is the bad guy or bad girl or whatever, and the courts don't really care about that. That's a big one. Um, I think the other thing is that people think that if they're the first ones to file the divorce, if they're the ones that, you know, initiate it, they somehow think that the courts will think that they're, again, the, the better person or the right person, or, and the courts also don't care about who files or starts the process. Um, that's a big one. Um, this one, I think, historically has been um, a misconception, and that is, that is that the mom always gets custody of the children. I, I think that has, um, well, I, I don't think it's ever really been true, but I, I think that maybe is not as much as a misconception over the last few years. Um, the courts are much um, open to whatever is best for the children and whatever parenting schedule um, will work best for them. Um, and so that's probably those are the top three uh, misconceptions, I would say. What okay. about the, um, the house and say, oh, I really want the house except that I need to get out of this house right now. Uh, and so, but if I'm, I'm afraid to leave the house yep. because then they'll think that I don't need to have the yes. get the house. That's a huge misconception. So, um, so if there's equity in the house and the house, you know, if the, the parties were going to sell it and they would clear a hundred thousand dollars, for example, and one party wants to move out of the house, but they don't want to move out of the house because they think if they move out of the house, they lose the equity in that house. Um, you do not lose your your rights financially to that house if you move out of the house. Um, so, however, what I do tell people, though, if they move out of the house and they've been out of the house for months and their spouse is living in the house, uh, it's going to be pretty hard to get an order from the court that for that spouse to get kicked out of that home and for you to move into that home. That part would be difficult, but you're both still going to be entitled to whatever equity has been built in that house, regardless of if someone moved out or if someone was still in the home. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. But, no, it is interesting. There's so many, um, yeah, variables. Right, right. We only much. have a few more minutes left. So okay. what's one last bit of advice that you think um, that every person who's thinking about divorce should think about first? I think that they should sit down with somebody just to get some basic information. Um, whether that's, oftentimes I have lots of people that come in just for that. They want to know, what if I get a divorce? Um, and sometimes I see those people again. Sometimes I don't. Um, and But a lot of times they're just relieved because in their minds they thought it was going to somehow end up a different way. 
Um, and then once they get some basic information about what will happen to their home and what will happen with child support if there's children and what happens to my health insurance, um, sometimes it lets people move forward because they were so afraid of what would happen if they got a divorce and maybe it isn't as bad as they thought it was going to be. And then now that they're informed, they're ready to kind of move forward with, with whatever they decide to do. Wow. Oh, that's been that's great. great. Thank you. you. Thank you, Michelle. Oh, thank yes. you. Wonderful uh, bit of information that anybody that's going through a divorce certainly should uh, think about. And that uh, pretty much concludes um, our program today. Thank you, Michelle. If you want to hear more about Michelle, uh, you can go on to our WBOA.org website. We have a list of directory there that lists all, all our members and you can find out more information and get contact information at that time.